Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with a news update video today. We'll have a look at some of the headlines that have caught my attention in the Spanish press and we'll also go through some of the comments that have been left on videos in recent times. Outside again today, fantastic day, a little bit chilly, not going to lie, but I've got a nice hot cup of coffee here to keep me warm while I go through the news. So let's get straight into it and uh, avian flu or bird flu dominating headlines in Spain currently. And as we can see here, contagion among minks complicates Spain's worst bird flu season. It's a ticking time bomb, somebody has said. On the 8th of September, an outbreak of avian influenza on a farm in Fontanar, a village of 2,500 inhabitants in Guadalajara, forced the culling of 600,000 hens and the creation of a 10 kilometer restriction zone affecting eight farms. Among them was Javier del Castillo, a family business with 40,000 hens. They sent me a registered letter saying we couldn't take eggs out. The vets inspected the farm, the hens were fine, and eight days later we were able to sell again, says Del Castillo, who since then has been disinfecting his truck and pallets every day. Now this is a topic that popped up on the channel last week, avian flu or bird flu. We know that it's a problem currently in the United States. It's a problem in Spain as we can see here and it's also a problem in other European countries. But unlike the States, the price of eggs here in Spain hasn't currently increased to the prices that they have there in the United States. Somebody said paying around seven euros for a dozen eggs in Texas, I think it was. Here in Spain, we're still paying decent prices for eggs. But uh, with news like this one, it's only a question of time before the price of eggs goes up. And as we can see in this headline, Spain's worst bird flu season, a ticking time bomb, according to this farmer here, Javier del Castillo, who uh, has some 40,000 hens in the Guadalajara province here in Spain, which is not far away from where I'm living here in the Madrid community. So we'll keep an eye on this and see if in coming weeks and months the avian flu does have an effect on chicken prices and egg prices here in Spain and other European countries. Now, the next piece of news today relates to fresh food products here in Spain. As we know, the government doing everything that it can at the moment to try to control the prices in the fresh food sector. Price caps on supermarket prices has something that they have mentioned. Uh, as we know, supermarkets not very happy about that. But as we can see from this headline here, fewer fresh products and more bargains, consumers are changing their habits due to food inflation. The sharp rise in food prices, the steepest recorded in the historical series, is causing changes in consumers' shopping habits. Nine out of 10 claim to have changed their habits due to the rise in inflation, according to a survey carried out by the Organization of Consumers and Users, OCU. Among the most significant changes reported is the reduction in the consumption of fresh produce, an option favoured by one in three consumers. Those who have cut back on fruit and vegetables account for 18%, a trend that has already been detected by producers in the countryside. So there we go, high food prices in supermarkets currently here in Spain, especially when it comes to fresh food products. And as we can see here, people buying fewer fresh products and looking for bargains, which is uh, logical given the prices that we have currently, people changing their habits. And I must admit that I have also changed my habits when it comes to buying fresh produce, some things I am trying to avoid at the moment, which are more expensive than they normally are. And I am looking for bargains every time I go to the supermarket. But of course, supermarkets know this and they put certain things on special uh, in order to uh, catch your attention. And sometimes you buy things that you don't even need. And that's one of the problems that we have currently. People looking for bargains, ending up with things that they don't need and less fresh produce in shopping baskets, which is not good. But uh, hopefully the government will be able to uh, do something here, whether they can step in or not, I don't know. But uh, people are complaining about this and people changing their habits, buying fewer fresh products, as we said. But anyway, what can we do? Now, the next story that we're going to look at today relates to a German pensioner who's traveling around Spain at the moment in an unusual way. As we can see here, the holidays of Hubert, the German pensioner who travels around Spain at 30 kilometers an hour, on a tractor. 
He travels through Spain at 30 kilometers per hour, and yet it is almost impossible to find him. He stops wherever he wants or whenever he can, and whoever crosses his path does not forget him. He is Hubert Wirth, a 74-year-old German pensioner who left his country more than two months ago and is now traveling around Spain on a tractor. Wherever he goes, everyone is surprised. It's a very unusual vehicle, says Hubert who also has a barrel-shaped caravan attached to his tractor. It used to be a portable sauna, but the retired carpenter has converted it into a small house on wheels where it doesn't even lack cable TV. So Hubert, the German pensioner, traveling around Spain with his tractor, caravan on the back of that tractor, but not going over 30 kilometers an hour because obviously he can't. So hopefully I won't get stuck behind Hubert when I'm traveling on some of the secondary roads in this country. And it must be a nightmare if you do get stuck behind Hubert, his tractor and his caravan. And uh, most likely Hubert is uh, one of these uh, German pensioners that has come down to Spain looking for better weather, not having to put his heating on this year. He's one of these energy uh, tourists, uh, well, people looking to lower their energy bills. And of course, here in Spain, traveling around with his caravan on the back of his tractor. An interesting story there. And uh, as we saw in the text, people that see Hubert do not forget him. Now, the final piece of news related to a British windsurfer who has uh, quit the UK for Spain. And as we can see here, surfing in a sewer, British windsurfer quits for Spain over water pollution. One of the world's leading windsurfers has quit the English South Coast for Spain after describing training near her home like surfing in a sewer. Sarah Jackson has won two World Championship silver medals and is ranked second in the world in her slalom discipline. The 24-year-old has been forced to relocate, however, due to the conditions of the water at Hailing Island, a windsurfing hotspot in Hampshire. This being Britain, where rainfall is very high, and because I have to train in all weathers, there were some days when I was basically surfing in a sewer, Jackson said. That's not just unpleasant, it's actually health-threatening, but it's opened my eyes to the problem of pollution in our waterways, not just from sewage, but from chemicals and plastics too. So an interesting story there of British windsurfer Sarah Jackson, champion windsurfer is Sarah, relocating to the Canary Islands because of the pollution problems near her hometown in Hampshire, the water absolutely disgusting with sewage uh, and also chemicals and plastics. So making a good move, I think, heading down to the Canaries, where not only do you get fantastic weather, but you also get very good windsurfing conditions, especially in a place like Fuerteventura, because as the name suggests, the wind blows strong every day, almost, and uh, an absolute paradise for windsurfers down there. And I'm sure that uh, living in the Canary Islands, she will be able to improve her windsurfing techniques and perhaps take out more world championships. Let's hope so for Sarah, but uh, time will tell. Now we'll go into the uh, comment section see what has been happening there recently. This one here from Duncan. I have no idea if there is evidence to support this, but as concerns the terrible rise of pre-cooked prepared food in the Spanish supers, I wonder if it's tied to the reality that many of the younger generation are accustomed to near instant gratification, meaning the mobile phone and similar devices. The older folks I know still cook and prepare their own food. Compare the decline and almost complete disappearance of the letter. I'm not young, but not that long ago I still wrote some letters. Now it's just texts and email. Yeah, Duncan, thanks for the comment. And you're right, you don't get too many people putting pen to paper anymore and writing traditional letters. In fact, I haven't written a letter for about 20 years, I would say. It's all emails nowadays and texts, WhatsApp, messaging and things like that. And uh, you're right, that's all young people do. Some of them won't have ever written a letter in their life, and I imagine they never will need to write a letter unless they get into some type of problem with the government and they are forced to write a letter. But uh, apart from that, I don't think so. And it could be related to the other problem that we mentioned the other day about how uh, pre-prepared food sections in supermarkets here in Spain is on the rise. Uh, people preferring to buy food already made, already cooked, just take it home, heat it up, rather than buy fresh food, uh, fruit and veg, meat, fish, etc. Take it home and have to cook it, elaborate the meal, even think of what you have to make. It's a lot easier for some people just to go to the supermarket and everything is there on the shelf ready for them. Uh, it could be a problem with the younger generations, I'm not sure, but I know people that aren't so young 
that are not cooking anymore in this country. And it's, uh, there's a number of reasons for this. I'm not going to go into them now, but it's got something to do with the traditional family roles of the past that have changed in recent times. And uh, that's one of the reasons why people don't cook anymore, because nobody's willing to take that responsibility. And it's just easier to go to the supermarket or call up a fast food place and get them to deliver some food to your abode. But uh, that's my opinion. If you have a differing opinion, please in the comment section below. Another comment left here from Jeffrey. A question for you. We have a place in Spain and we have brought the house off our parents plus the car. Unfortunately, my wife's dad died on New Year's Eve. The car is in his name, but he signed a document saying it was handed over. We do have the letter. How do we go about sorting this out? Yeah, Jeffrey, thanks for the comment and sorry about the loss of your father-in-law. And when it comes to this type of thing, as somebody uh, replied to your comment in the comment section said, better to seek a gestor here in Spain, G-E-S-T-O-R, somebody that knows how to take care of paperwork and things like this, administrative processes here in Spain, I'm sure that they will be able to sort that out for you when it comes to the uh, car documentation. Uh, as you said, your uh, father-in-law signed that before he died, handed it over, but how do you go about uh, sorting this out legally? Uh, I think that would be the best option. Talk to a gestor, see what they say. And if you need a gestor that specializes in traffic here in Spain, uh, send me an email because I have a friend who does just that. Another comment here from Sean. What a disgusting load of plastic waste that comes with those fried eggs. I have noticed that with supermarkets like Mercadona, there is a constantly increasing amount of plastic I'm filling my bin with. If you can't be asked to crack an egg or peel a spud, you can't be hungry enough. Yeah, Sean, thanks for the comment. And another comment related to the debate that we started last week about the amount of prepared food in Spanish supermarkets. For example, Mercadona, like Sean mentions here, and uh, he's absolutely right. The bin in my home that fills up the most is the plastics bin. And if you go to a supermarket and buy basically anything at a supermarket nowadays, it comes in a plastic package. And as I said, that plastic bin fills up a lot quicker than the others. I have three rubbish containers inside, one for plastic, one for normal rubbish, and one for composting. So for example, potato peels, apple peels, and things like that, uh, eggs go into the composting. But it is the plastic side of the rubbish that fills up the most, and I'm sure that that is the case in most houses here in Spain, because as I said, go to a supermarket, as Sean points out here, and it's a plastic, plastic, plastic. When I was growing up, I don't think there was the amount of plastic around that we have nowadays. For example, you would buy a can of Coke or a can of Fanta or something like that when we were kids, but nowadays it's all about plastic bottles and uh, everything seems to come in a plastic container, unfortunately. And finally, one here from Jose Antonio. All Spanish lentil recipes include carrots and a bay leaf. In the Spanish supermarkets, lentils come from Canada, chickpeas from Mexico, beans from China, and the asparagus from Peru. It's artichoke season now, but that menestra didn't have it. Yeah, Jose Antonio, thanks for the comment, and obviously referring to the meal that I had last Friday. Did a video about it. Lentil dish was the first course, and a menestra de verduras was the second course. And you're right, there was no artichoke in that menestra. But as you said here, that uh, lentils come from Canada here in Spain, chickpeas come from Mexico, beans come from China, and asparagus comes from Peru. So my question is, are any of the vegetables that I had in that menestra the other day from Spain? That would be the question I have for you, Jose Antonio, and why are these things imported? Are they cheaper to import rather than buy them locally? That must be the reason, otherwise it doesn't make sense to bring chickpeas all the way from Mexico, lentils to come all the way from Canada, beans to come all the way from China, and asparagus coming all the way from Peru? You gotta be joking, right? But anyway, that is the globalized world in which we are living. People obviously don't wanna pay expensive prices for local products, so they prefer to buy imported products, and that's the reason no doubt that all of the products that you mentioned there come from other countries. On that note, I'm going to wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the video out as you normally do. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.